Hi everyone. This is an interesting question. It's a GMAT hard math question from statistics. Lovely question. It's a lot of data given in it and one or two words could make a significant difference into whether we get the answer right or otherwise. Let's get started with the question. The analysis of the monthly incentives received by five salesmen. So number of elements that we have, number of data points that we have is five, not too many. The mean and median is 7,000. Okay. The only mode among the observations is 12,000. Incentives paid to each salesman were in full thousands. So it could be a 4,000, 5,000. It's not going to be 4,000, 120 or some such number. What is the difference between the highest and the lowest incentive paid received by these five salesmen in the month is what the question is. Okay, look at it. We're talking about mean, we're talking about median, we're talking about mode. The difference between highest and lowest is nothing but the range. We covered four of the important statistical parameters in one single question. Wow, lovely question. Let's get started. Let's make sense out of it. Let's say the salesman incentives received are A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. And let's say this is the ascending order of the incentives, right? The lowest incentive paid in this month is A dollars. The highest incentive paid in this month is E dollars, right? Let's make sense of the first data point. Mean and median is 7,000. Arranged in ascending order out of the five elements, the third one is going to be the median. So C is equal to 7,000. That is done. We know that this is also the mean. So let's make sense out of it. What is the mean? Sum of those five numbers divided by five. So quickly we can find out the sum. Let's do the first part. A plus B plus C plus D plus E divided by five is equal to 7,000. This is to account for median. This is to account for the mean. So we can say A plus B plus C plus D plus E is equal to 5 times 7,000 and that is equal to 35,000. So we know the third element is equal to 7,000. The sum is equal to 35,000, right? 7,000, 35,000. We can easily plug the 7,000 here. Let's move on. Let's look at the next piece of data. There is a mode. If they had said there is no mode, then what it would have meant is all of these five numbers, A, B, C, D, E, are distinct integers is what we would have got. Distinct numbers in multiples of thousands is what we would have got. But they are saying a mode exists. A mode comes into picture when at least one element appears twice. And here they are saying there is only one mode. So 12,000 is the only number that appears at least twice. Okay. So when you are writing numbers in ascending order, the third number is a 7,000. So 12,000 has to appear to the right of it and 12,000 has to appear at least twice and there are only two numbers which we can fit in greater than 7,000. So D and E are both 12,000. Let's make sense out of this inference once more. They're saying there is a mode. If there is a mode, at least one number should appear twice for a mode to exist and the number that appears with the highest frequency is going to be the mode. That much is evident. They're saying there is a unique mode and the mode is 12,000. So only one number repeats and that with the highest frequency and that number happens to be 12,000. How many times can 12,000 appear? 7,000 happens to be the third element. So 12,000 when you are writing it in ascending order should appear to the right of the 7,000. There are only two slots available. So those two slots will have to go to 12,000. And these two numbers A and B, can they be equal? Can they not be equal? Just pause the video for a minute and think. For example, A and B happen to be the same value then what would happen? We'll have more than one mode. The question says there's a unique mode. So 12,000 is the only number that repeats. It appears twice. So D and E are 12,000. C is a 7,000. Let's just plug that data here and then see what we have. So A plus B plus C is a 7,000. D and E are each 12,000. This sum is equal to 35,000 is what we have. So this is C, this is D, this is E. 24 plus 7, 31,000 gone. So A plus B is equal to 35,000 minus 31,000, which is equal to 4,000. Discussed it a little while ago. I'll recap it again in this when we are doing this. So A plus B is equal to uh, 4,000 is what we have. The incentives received are in multiples of thousands. All of these five salesmen have received incentive. So a zero plus 4,000 is not possible. Negative incentives are obviously not possible. So these numbers will have to be positive integers, multiples of 1,000. Can it be a 2,000 and 2,000? That would have been a possibility if we had more than one mode because there is only one mode. This is ruled out. So we need to get a A plus B to be a 4,000, multiples of 1,000 and two distinct values. That's possible when A is equal to a 1,000 and B is equal to a 3,000. So what is the lowest incentive receipt? 1,000. 
what is the highest incentive received that's equal to 12000 this is the lowest value the highest value is equal to a 12000 so difference between the highest and the lowest incentive is a 12000 minus a thousand which is equal to 11000 choice e is the correct answer to this question the gmat focus edition dates have been announced if you have not been following the news you can take the GMAT focus edition from the 7th of November, which is roughly about 40 days from this point in time. So if you already started your preparation, you're midway through the course of your preparation, you're into the last bit, which is you've started taking the mock examinations right now, book your date for the focus edition, get started with the focus edition preparation. If you have your GMAT score, even by the 15th of December, you can take the test from the 7th of November itself. But even if you have the test scores by the 15th of December, you should be able to catch round two deadlines of most business schools for an MBA program that starts in 2024, right? If you're just about starting a preparation, if you invest about four to five hours during the week, if you have that kind of time and can do a little more during the weekends, you still should be able to do justice to your GMAT by the 15th of December, right? You need a little more intensive preparation during the 60 odd days window if you're starting a preparation only now, right? Can you catch round two deadlines if you start a GMAT preparation even today? Certainly can. More effort is required. If you've already started, you can coast through it beautifully, right? Best wishes for your GMAT preparation.